Hi everyone, so we're into binomial expansion, well sorry not binomial expansion, binomial distribution, so statistics, how is it made? Well in class we may have already covered this introduction briefly but <clears throat> I think it's important to have this in uh, something permanent, something you can look at and um, maybe you'll understand it better as well if we do this again, okay? So <clears throat> what we've got is a five-sided spinner you can see there are different colors. I am going to do this fairly quickly. Given that the spinner is spun five times, write down in table form the probability distribution of the following random variables. So as soon as you see probability distribution, personally, I'm like, right, we need to build a table then. And X means the number of times that heads appear, uh, that red appears. So X, probability X equals X, right? So think about what can happen, well, if the this, this spinner is spun five times, right, How if x is the number of reds that, can, uh, that appears, if it's spun five times, we could get no reds in that time, we could get one red, two red, three red, four red, or if we spin it five times, we could get five times it being red. How do we find that probability? Well, <clears throat> let's think about uh, uh, how we would get no times, okay? So for probability of x equaling zero, if we said that r was like probability of getting red, so probability of getting red, we can see it is two out of five, right? Because it occupies two out of the five spaces. In probability of not red, so notice the dash, next to the r must be 3 by 5, okay? So the probability of x being 0, that means I would have to get not red, not red, not red, not red, and not red, wouldn't I? I'd have to get 5 not reds, okay? So this would be 3 over 5, 5 times. So 3 over 5 to the power of 5, right? So in my calculator, 3 over 5 to the power of 5, is 243 over 3125. Great. Okay. What about the probability of getting one red? Oh, this isn't very nice. So I'm going to have to be systematic about this, aren't I? I'm going to have to. So let's say the first one I get a red, but all the other ones I don't get red. Yeah? Or let's say I don't get red the first one, and then the second one I do, so all the others are don'ts. Yeah? So. Again, I'm just listing these out. Don't. Let's say this time the fourth one I do. Okay. And then, the, and then finally, the last one I do. Okay. So there are five different combinations of me getting, or different ways of me getting one red out of five spins. Now, this should link to your binomial work in your assignment, okay? Hopefully, this rings a bell that this is called 5C1. So 5 choose 1. And if you put in your calculator 5, and then you press uh, shift divide sign, that gives you your C button, and then you press 1, you'll see you'll get 5, okay? We're not going to go into why that is that, because this is only meant to be a fairly short video, well, you know, a normal size video, and I want to show you how binomial distribution works. So, <clears throat> notice 5C1 means how many ways I can arrange or pick out one thing out of five objects. There are five ways. Notice this is 5C2, uh, 5C0, sorry. How many ways can I pick zero objects uh, or rearrange zero objects when there are five of them, well, or zero wins, if you want to put it that way, okay? You could think about this one as the red. So how many ways can I get red uh, when, out of <coughs> when the other four are not red? So how many ways can I get a red when the other five are not reds? Well, there's only one way I can do that, and it's only without any reds in it at all, okay? Likewise, <coughs> oh no, let's just finish that bit off then. So 5C1, right? And every single time for this situation, we have one red and we have four non-reds, okay? So can you see that this is going to give us then, red is two out of five chance, yeah? 
and four reds is three out of five chance <coughs> times by you know times by itself four times you see so there's your two by five and there's your three by five times three by five times three by five times three by five there are five different ways of getting that so notice we've got five two over five three over five to the power of four okay now if I so if I put that in my calculator, 2 by 5 times 3 by 5 all to the power of 4 times by 5, I get 162 over 625, okay? So 5C1 is just a quick way of knowing how many different, uh, different lines I have, basically, of combinations, okay? Because if I did the next one, probability of x equals 2, this you'll see is going to take a while. You see I could have, so that means two reds, yeah? So red, red, and then no reds. But I could move that second red, can, I could get red, and then not red, and then I could get red, so the other ones must be not reds. And red, red, not red. This time I do get red, not red, red, not red, not red, not red, and then the last one could be red. Do you see? So already there's four combinations, but then I could look at it like, right, that's when the first one was red, but what was when the second one's red? So not red, 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 so second and third are red, not red, not red, and this time then, not red, but the second one's red, but the third one isn't red, let's say it's the fourth one this time, red, red, not red, not red, and red, do you see? So already we're on seven combinations, but then what happens if, I have to put it over here, what happens if red happened on the third time so not red not red red and fourth time not red so one one this time happens on the third doesn't happen on the fourth happens on the fifth and then finally the only one possible left is that if it happens on the last two times so see in total I've got ten different combinations here okay and hopefully from your work then you'll know that that's 5c2 if you put that in your calculator that is 10 okay uh, how many ways can i rearrange two things out of the five or choose two things out of the five there are 10 ways of doing that okay and just like before because i've got two reds that's going to be the same as two by five squared and here i've got three non-reds so three by five cubed okay so the probability of me getting that is 5c2 times by 2 by 5 all squared, 3 by 5 all cubed. So I'm not going to do any more of that because hopefully you can see a pattern now. So 5c2 times by 2 by 5 squared times by 3 by 5 cubed. So that's 216 over 625. And as you know, all probabilities should add up to one in the end okay so i'm going to rub this bit off at the bottom because now hopefully you can see the pattern so how would i work out threes yeah so three hopefully you can see that's going to be five choose three and as there's going to be three reds i'm going to get two by five to the three times by three by five to the two okay so notice the three, this is my number of successes. So if I call red my number of successes, this is what I'm going to call my, uh, well, let's just call that, let's just call that red, okay? Number of reds gives me the same power here. And then notice here, this is five take, uh, five take three, isn't it? So <coughs> this is my total number, let's say total number N, okay? So can you see <clears throat> what's happening here? So if I wanted to know the 4 one, it's going to be 2 by 5 to the power of 4. So whatever this number is, it comes to the top, 3 by 5 to the power of 1. If I want to know if there were how many chances, uh, what's the probability of me getting 5 reds? 5 choose 5, 2 by 5 to the power of 5, 3 by 5 to the power of 0, you see? So, to formalize that up, this is the binomial expansion. All right, uh, let's just add one extra in here. 
Okay, this is the binomial expansion formula. All right, so if you have n objects, okay, and I want the probability of choosing r of them, so r objects out of those n, your formula <coughs> is going to be n choose r, right? The probability of getting r, so this is normally called p, okay? So p to the power of r, and then 1 minus p to the n minus r. So if we link that to what we had before, we had five objects, so n was five, yeah? We had p, which is the probability of getting a red, so that was, uh, sorry, that was two by five, wasn't it? Okay, and it made sense that not getting a red, right? So p, in this case, was r, and one minus p then would be not getting r, so it must be the leftover three by five, do you see? So if I want to pick, uh, if I want three reds, remember, so five, choose r is three, we've got two by five is our p to the power of r, so this one literally just goes straight there, and then the one minus to the five, take away three, so two, okay? So I know that these two powers should add up to n, you see? So they should total n, I, that, I, that way I know that I've done the right thing. And I know that this one here should be the same as this power here, okay? Now, formally, how do we write a binomial expansion, or a binomial distribution, sorry? I say that x is distributed binomially with n objects and the probability of success being p, okay? So, <clears throat> in class, n is number of trials, okay? p means probability of success. So this is of success where probability of x equaling r, okay, is going to be n c r p to the power of r, 1 minus p to the n take r, okay? So this is called a binomial distribution. We'll talk a bit more about what needs to be in there, but there are four conditions that need to be satisfied. How am I doing for time? Uh, 13 minutes. Okay, four conditions that need to be satisfied. The first one is, for this to work, basically, all right, there needs to be a finite number of trials. So a finite n, okay? Secondly, there has to be equal, um, so let's say constant. So for it to work, you know, for what we just did to work, the probability of me getting a red had to be the same the whole time, you see? So constant p, constant probability p, right? Number three, all the, all me picking out that red on that spinner, they were all independent from each other, weren't they? It didn't affect the experiment, therefore didn't change the probabilities if I got a red before. That's not going to help me get a red on the next spin, okay? So finite n, constant p, independent, and we need two options, basically, six, what's called success or failure. So in this case, it was red or not red, okay? Right, always remembering those assumptions. So how does this work and how can we use our calculator to speed this process up? So let's do an example. It says a particular genetic marker is present in 4% of the population. So this is a hint telling you, right, that's my probability of a success Okay, so success has probability 0 0.04, do you see? So straight away, um, for part A, it says state any assumptions that are required to model the number of people as a binomial distribution. Okay, so the assumptions, just like before, if we're going to do that, uh, people have to be, uh, the population has to be independent from each other. So independent population, or people from each other, right? Uh, they also needs to be a finite n, so a finite population, yeah? So n, 
Uh, it has to be success or failure. So they either have the marker or don't. So success, failure. So marker or marker or not. And finally, remember it was a constant, um, a constant success. Uh, so constant probability of success. So in this case, it is at four percent. Okay. So we can use a binomial expansion for this problem, right? Part B, use this model. Okay, so what I need to do is I need to create a binomial model. And how do I do that? So every single time I'm going to write this. So X is, I used it before, X is distributed. That's what this sign means, distributed, okay? So if X is the probability of me picking someone with this marker, X is distributed binomially, so B, with a sample size of 50, okay? So it wants to say, it wants us to use this model to find the probability of exactly six people having this marker. So 50 people is our sample size, and P, the probability of success is 0 0.04, fantastic. And it wants to know the probability of getting exactly six people. So hopefully, from what you've picked up is that we can straight away write 50, choose the number we want, which is six. So that's our R value. Probability of success to the power of the R value times by one minus that probability, what's left to the power, okay? So I can straight away go 50, choose six, times 0 0.04 to the power of six, times 0.96 to the power of 44. So I get, and you do this too, okay? 0 0.108, and there we go, all right? I could do this quicker using my calculator. So there's another way of doing that, all right? I'll stop this video in a sec, and I'll start another one to show you the next part. But I could do this using my calculator. I'm not sure how well you can see the screenshots, OK? So let's do this together. I want you to grab your calculator, your new, your new fancy white one, right? You're going to go to the mode and hit 7, OK? You're going to see this. Um, OK, you're going to hit 7, right? And you're going to see. I didn't want that one. You're going to see this one that says normal PD, normal CD, inverse, right? Okay, and at the bottom it says binomial PD. So I want you to go to number four, binomial PD, okay? And then hit number, so you're going to hit four, then you're going to, so I'll change that to hit four, all right? Um, then you're going to hit number two, so variable, and then you've got this binomial PD uh, thing here, okay? So X, what you need to do is type in, X is the number you're looking for. So PD means probability density, so it wants, it just, when you hit the PD when you want X equals something, okay? So here you can see uh, X is zero, so we want to find when X is six, so hit six equals, for N, N is our total number, which we know is 50, so hit 50, equals, and then for P, our probability of success is 0.04. It equals, and it says zero. Oh, sorry, 0.04, yeah. Cool, and we get the same answer as what we've got before. <gasps> Big smiley face. Okay, there we go. I'm going to do that again on the next video.